Hello, everybody. Um, so, based off the poll we had in Teams back on October 5th, um, put in there, had probably eight different suggestions of different appliances because we begin, Jerry and I get, and Aaron get a lot of um, feedback from you as far as far as what item do we want to cover during these meetings so we make sure we get stuff that you actually want to see. So based off that poll and the responses, the number one response that we got, I did ask for two things to be picked, but the number one overwhelmingly response that was received was our buddy the Samsung Flex Washer. So let's add the washer within a washer and people like, how the hell does this come apart? Um, so what we're going to do is we're not going to cover two appliances today. We're just going to cover the one. There's two versions of this particular washing machine out in the wild. This is the newer version, mm -hmm. but the older version comes apart very, very similarly. And where there are differences, um, I'll make sure to point them out where those differences are between the new one and the old one. So that way you're not tripped up when you get to one of the older units. And um, there's also some well-known and well-documented issues with the older units that we'll also talk about too. It's a very, very common repair for uh, those of you that have had the fun of doing it in the fabric softener, uh, upper fabric softener uh, repair. It is, um, it is a chore, but we'll talk about how to get into that, how to get this apart, uh, what you're looking for, what are the pitfalls and perils, you know, what things can get in your way. Um, this is definitely one of those appliances, even though it's not stacked, you're going to want to bring a friend, um, especially if you've mm -hmm. got to take off this upper washer. Uh, it's got some gravity in it. Um, <laughs> it's not fun. While one could move it on their own, one shouldn't move it on their own. Right, it's like the one person skew versus the two. Yeah, we can all pull a microwave down from above a range, but do you want to? <laughs> so, um, so based off of that, like I said, we'll talk, we'll kind of walk through how to get this apart. Um, some of the tricks that I've learned, I deal with a good number of these, because um, right as the Samsung Flex washers came out, um, there was a whole housing development in a couple towns over from me that everybody and their grandmother bought this particular washer to put in their house because they thought it was great. And there's all, you know, brand new families where I can do the baby's clothes up top and my family clothes down below. And, and so I've seen uh, a lot of these, fortunately or unfortunately for me. Uh, so any questions as we're kind of run through it, if I'm going too fast, you know, hit up the chat and we can kind of slow it down. We can look over a piece of it get a little bit more in depth. Um, so we'll get cracking. So the first thing too with this is getting the cover off. So underneath here is where our soap dispensers sit. Um, the original unit had um, one piece that went all the way across the soap dispensers. Um, so we'll take these off. Next thing too, for the for this lid, on both units, on the side right over here, there's a little latch pin that you can slide over. So you take a small screwdriver, stick it in here, you can slide this whole thing over and it right just comes up and off. Makes it very easy to get to. Now the original piece, this piece right up top here, you can kind of see the seam that goes across the front here. On the original washer, this is all one piece. So you have to get underneath the front edge between the control panel and this piece gently and kind of pry it up and separate the two. This newer one, they made it even more fun because now they made it in three pieces. Mm -hmm. And you have to take the center one off first because it overlaps the two outer sides, but you do it the same way. It's just a matter of getting the putty knife in at a pretty steep angle underneath the front. There's two little catches here and here once you can pry that, you pry one side up and you pry the other side up and then it just lifts and comes off. Uh, and we'll get the other sides off here. Once you get the one side off, it should come up pretty easy. Don't worry, I'm not breaking your washer, ma'am. It's popping and snapping. It's supposed to be normal. Oh, that wasn't normal. <laughs> All right. So I'm just grabbing a pick tool. 
because the latches are on the back side of this and it doesn't always like to release in the corner. So if you use a right angle pick tool, I can get underneath it and pull it away. That way I don't break the latch. <laughs> Come on. There's a the one. Yeah, don't be afraid of these. Yep. You know, um, it's going to sound off with the client's going to be all, you know, freaking out. Don't. Two. All right. So that's probably one of the hardest parts of this whole thing um, is getting that part off. So let me grab my drill because it's the most fussy and it's the part that you can actually probably have the most chance of breaking um, trying to get it apart. They like said start with the center one first and then do the outer sides. If you are doing one of the old versions of this, and if you'll notice the old version, the UI, the whole interface here, is completely different. You actually have all of the Samsung like feature buttons. There's a lot more embossing on the front of the original unit. It's, it's very aesthetically, the control panel is completely different, but it comes apart and goes together the exact same way. Um, so once you do that, the, um, the next thing that we want to do is actually we're going to show you how to get inside of here. So this washing machine, it's two washers, but it also has two computers, two main boards. The main board for the upper washers up here, the main board for the lower washers in the back and the bottom in the middle, right? Just like our, a lot of typical Samsung front loaders, that computer sits down low along with the inverter board that controls th this, sits down low. Um, so, um, yep, so we can see down here, so there's two screws on the bottom here, that whole board slides to the right, and then you can kind of push this up and out of the way and lift it up and out. Um, and but it's in two pieces, there's two covers on it, okay, um, it's cool, it's, uh, Really easy to take apart, self so explanatory. So now the trick to getting this so all of there's a lot of wiring harnesses and stuff that go between this upper piece here and the the uh, lower washer. So we need to undo those harnesses to get start to the process of separating these two. So one of the things we did is there there's a security Allen key here and here, like those light little do not undo these screws we undid them for taking this apart but is a t20 security screw um, which means it has that little pinhole in the middle of it that you've got to have a normal t20 torx will not get that screw out so make sure if you don't have the, the fun bit this is the this is the fun part where i get to talk about tools again because like every single time we talk about taking an appliance apart there's a special tool to it this is no different. On I procurement, and if Dan Bender's in the chat, Dan will find it here real quick. There's security bit sets that you can get on I procurement. If you don't have one, get them. But they're all the standard torques, and there's some other fun. Um, there's tri wings and other fun so bits. But the ones we use the most are security Allens and security torques, um, and they'll work in the place of a regular Allen and a regular torques bit too. They just have a pinhole rem of material removed in the middle so it can fit on these screws and to actually take them out. Um, so. And in a pinch, if you didn't have them, uh, both Home Depot has it. Yes. Ryobi, it's a whole nice kit. It's very inexpensive. And the other one is Harbor Freight. Um, they have a nice set that uh, gets you out of the woods. So Always forget to order stuff on iProcurement while it's, you know, stop in and get it. And <coughs> let Aaron expense it for you. <laughs> Um, okay, so two screws on the top cover on the back side. Now, how do we get this cover up? This is a trick I've kind of figured out to get these off. So I'm using some long pine shims. Um, turn them so it just makes a, a solid platform. I'm going to put this right on the edge of the glass for the top washer. And we're going to start on one side. So this putty knife, I want it just, there's a lip on this edge here 
that just hangs over about that far. And I'll be able to show it a little better once I get this cover up. But there's just a little lip on this upper piece of plastic cover that I want to get this putty knife underneath. So you get it underneath the lip and then push. And that actually pops it free. So if you need to, you can also do the same thing, like slide everything over, do the same thing on the other side and pop it free and pop it up. Now, this won't come completely away. The reason is, because our connector down underneath here is for, I'm gonna open up this can of worms, this is for Haas. You know that wonderful app that we don't have access to? This is where you'd interface Haas. It's actually a rubber opening in the back that allows you to plug that Haas cabling into to be able to run that app. But we ain't got it, so we're not talking about it. Um, all right, so covers off. As you can see, there's all of our, um, all of our valves for both the upper and the lower washer are right here. Um, and then most of the connections that you're going to disassemble that go between the, that go to the lower washer are all right here in this bundle. Um, so first, we'll show you this edge. So you can see there's a lip on this and that's where I'm getting the knife, putty knife in is right into there to kind of pry this cover up to get the clips to release because the clips are all the way down in the bottom, the bottom edge of this and there's no way you're actually getting anything practical in, in there. I've tried doing it with lifting this lid up and the lid ends up swinging further back so it actually ends up getting in the way of the lid even coming up, um, which becomes a major pain. So this, now we start on doing all of these harnesses have their own little pockets that they sit into on the back here. We kind of open all these up. He can just chill out. And the nice thing is, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time like trying to mark these and label them. They've got them set up in such a way that this only plugs into this. Like it only goes into, this connector only ever plugs into this one. This one only ever plugs into that one. The same with these, they've got a blue one and two white ones, there's a big white one, and a little white one, so it makes it pretty straightforward as far as which goes where, so we don't mix them up um, when we're putting it back together. Yeah. So. Nope, oh, that stays. Now, so we got everything separated except for our ground wire, which grounds the upper and the lower washers together. Um, there's an access cover here that allows us into the wiring heart and that Another thing too since we're talking about it just as an aside I know all of us have this good habit but with a lot of new folks just want to make sure um, that we don't set tools down right on the customer's cabinetry or things like that. And if we do, make sure that we have something of ours, like even using a microfiber cloth, set it down, and then our tools can go on Lay something, down. right, just to protect their own stuff. Um, clients, is, clients do, they do pick up on that stuff that, you know, we're taking care of their property. The other thing, too, I like is as I probably mentioned previously, as I love these microfiber cloths, whenever I take the screws out, so screws are in my hand, I take the microfiber cloth, I'll put it down and put the screws on this. Mm -hmm. That way they are, one, if I need to move it, I can just pick up the whole cloth and move it aside. Right. Number two, it doesn't, blend the it doesn't blend into the carpet or the rug or the countertop or the surface of the machine or whatever else, and they tend to stay put a lot easier because they're not gonna roll around. So you can pick the whole thing up and move it aside. Um, and usually I'll just set it down on the floor somewhere out of the way that I know that I won't be stepping on it. <coughs> so some of you guys too, I know we, um, a lot of folks like to have, like they'll take things apart as far as with screws, right? And you'll keep like, okay, these three were for this thing. So like with the little metal plate, put the three screws in the metal plate. So when you pick the plate up, you know, okay, here's the three screws for that piece. Right, we already have the back motor cover off. The two screws for the back motor cover are already right in here. I also took the two screws for this, this cover are on the back motor plate that's down behind us. So it makes this very easy to figure out if you're one of those folks that you get near the end of the job and like, 
why do I have extra screws? Or where did these screws go? If you kind of tie them together with the, with the item that you're taking it apart, it helps you remember where they go. Um, and also too, I, again, I'll say another thing. If you're concerned about the wire harnesses that we took apart on the back, take a picture of it with your phone before you take it apart. That way, just make it look like the picture. You know, before you even took it out of the little pockets, okay, I don't remember which pocket that one went into. Take a picture of it before you touch anything so that way you know what current state, functioning state, or used to function state looked like so you can get it back to that state. And then the understanding with what each of those things do and how they go into there will just come with familiarity and more time. All right, so we got the harnesses undone on the back. Um, there's a couple other pieces left on the back side that we'll do, and then we will get to uh, everything on the front side. So because it's actually two different washers, there are two different drain pumps. There's a drain pump for the upper washer, there's a drain pump for the front, for the lower washer. Lower washer point for this washing machine is just like every other Samsung front load, the drain pump's in the front uh, left-hand corner, right behind the door, the access door. For the upper washer, it's in the top, uh, it's on the top right as you're facing the machine, as you're facing from the front, it's on the same side as the, the, the lower washer. So we'll do the first thing, we'll take this cover off. Thank you, sir. So cover down, put the screws on it. Now, inside of here, let's see if I can turn this for Jesse a little bit. Can you see me, Jesse? Yeah. You see inside? Okay. So this hose right here, so right here is the drain pump. Obviously, this is the exit point, right, that hooks up to our, our drain tubing here. This clip is actually just squeezable by hand. So you can squeeze this, move this out of the way, and then just peel this off. And that's the drain pump. This is all the water from that upper washer tub that now would go into the drain point so tube. It's also keyed when you put it back on again. Yep, so there's the notch key right here that lines up with the, the, uh, the pipe and just make sure that everything, that it's snug up against there. And then you can just squeeze. These are nice, big, easy to grip clips and um, doesn't require a ton of hand strength to be able to get that on, which is great. You don't have to use something, you're not sitting here with a pair of pliers trying to get this, the uh, drain hose off. Okay, two more screws on the back to take off and then we should be pretty much done with the back side to get this upper washer off. There's one here, and these would be the equivalent of that top, the top cover screws. They're the big hex-headed guys that you would find um, just on the normal covers of any of the Samsung front loaders. All right. Now, we will turn this back around and take the face off. All right, so three screws across the top. Is everybody tracking with us so far? No, no questions yet? Okay. So this, I just use a screwdriver. There's, again, where the screws are, there's three little tabs that are kind of grabbed onto the piece of metal. Um, start from one side and kind of work our way over. Come on. Sometimes they're at least much easier than others. Yeah. So I grab, grab a store unit. And these are the ones that come apart. <laughs> this is where we we almost curse in the client's home but we don't yes 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 don't <laughs> you can say it in here just don't say it out here <laughs> all right well, this is one of those it's gonna just chap my backside today 
There we go. So just all I did was spatula, probably you know, uh, under one side, the other side, and then kind of lift up with the screwdriver in the middle to keep them all up. So it would, and it just pulls straight away. Underneath, two wires. There's a little holder that Jerry's getting it out of. And again, these are two different sizes: one big one, one small one, and there's the control panel away. It's been pretty cool. This comes as one complete unit here. Um, yep. Show the back side. So, yep. It's all one complete piece. Okay. Quick and easy to come up. So now, the fun part that is the bane of all Samsung front loaders, the screws underneath the front cover, all the way at the bottom. So if you don't have one, again, right angle drill bit. These are a godsend when it comes to this, because all you have to do is just tip the machine back. But there's two screws underneath this. So you know we're front loaders, right? They have the front cover and they have that right angle piece of steel underneath that the front cover kind of sits over the top of. Well, in LG, they just, they have one screw that's behind this cover, right? That holds that point so it doesn't vibrate. And then they have foam tape along the other, along that edge where the two pieces of steel from the, the front cover and the back meet. Samsung does it a little bit differently. Instead of having screws underneath here, this is all clipped into place. They put two screws where those pieces of steel meet, where my index finger is of, my, of this hand, there's actually a screw that goes up through there to tile that metal together on the underside to keep that vibration from occurring um, when the machine's in spin and washing. So we'll get underneath. The nice thing is, if you got a small bit, just pr lifting the machine up, a bit tipping it back you can get access to this so there's one so we have the front load machines in the samsung we have three screws facing in on the bottom same thing with the new with the ge uh, washer so we'll get this out All right, now, at least for the rest of the front, co the face cover, it's gonna come apart just like any other front load washer that we've ever played with. So we've got the door gasket spring, which where are you today? You are all the way over here. Always know where that spring came off, is the front gasket, the diaphragm, kind of takes the shape that kind of likes to being in the same spot. Um, doesn't matter where where it started, just as long as it ends up yep. in the same place, you won't end up with a So, loop. just made a visual note that right here where this bump is is where I'm going to put that spring back because that's where it came from. So, peel the gasket off. Now, I'm going to put my hand in here and put it behind the latch assembly. Um, so this is one difference between, again, this newer machine and the older machines is that this one only has two screws. By the way, these two screws are going to be different from every other screw that you've taken out so far. These are both going to be stainless steel. So which means if you drop these two, your magnet pickup tool is not going to work to pick them up because stainless steel screws are not magnetic. Um, so make sure don't drop these. Uh, or if, at least if you do, know where, keep an eye, a really good eye on where it went because you're not going to like yourself very much trying to, trying to fish them out of wherever they came from. But this, as I was saying, the latch assembly here is a little different. The older ones, this button here was up higher, so they had a third screw up high. Um, this one, they've simplified it. They brought the, the button down lower, so it's just two screws. And I just hold it in place, so I'm not, because as you're pushing against it, it'll just push it through. and have more of a chance of losing the screws. So we can pull that free and just let it chill. All right, and then we've got a couple screws across the top here. Uh, and then there's also some, um, just some of the sheet metal latches on the top. Again, this is a typical Samsung build. 
uh, that we've got to get past. So, one. So for these, again, our friend the putty knife, push in, it'll give you a little bit of a gap, and you just take the corner of this in, and it'll lift it up just enough to be able to get through. And where did I put my second one? And this is why I have two. One for that side, one for, that one side. for this side. Yeah, went in too far. There we go. Door will swing. Door will swing open. Should have everything. And now, if we did everything right, ta-da! One problem I've come across: uh, clients are not using liquid detergent. But powdered detergent. Um, well, I've found this hose here completely blocked the detergent. It's like cement. Okay, you take it apart and say, oh, it's leaking and everything else. Reach in and squeeze this hose. Okay, you're going to find that it's solid. Um, disconnect both ends of it, run it in the sink with hot water. Okay, because um, powdered detergent turns to uh, cement. You will see it. All right, so now we got the front cover off. Again, looks pretty much, at least from about here down, looks just like everything, every other Samsung front load that we've actually ever seen, right? There's not a ton of differences here. Drain pump, recirculation pump. Um, there is one thing I want to point out with these. There are two leak sensors. There's one on the right, right behind the drain pump. So right back behind on that side. And then there's one on this side, right, right behind this, the front strut, or the front shock, uh, vibration damper. Okay. That one is called LC1. This one is called 1LC1. One so when you get a leak error and the client's telling you, hey, yeah, it came up with this error code, L, you know, 1LC1, one which is usually the one we're going to find, unfortunately, the most often, it tells you that the leak sensor on the right hand side of the washing machine was the one that was tripped. You don't have to replace the leak sensors. If you take this out, it's two screws, you take it out, all it is is a series of pins. It's four pins, two reds, two blues. And it basically works on the principle that water conducts electricity. So as soon as you get a pool of water underneath those pins and either one of the reds and one of the blues conduct electricity through the water, that's what sends the leak sensor issue. Right, so it's it doesn't take a ton uh, to set that off, and it, all you have to do is lift it out and just clean up underneath right. it. Clean the pins off, clean up the water underneath, and put it back. Um, unless they're really like it's been sitting for months and months and months, and the pins are corroded. Um, they're brass pins, but. I've never seen a reason to have to change it's that out. It's the same one we use in the dishwasher. Yep, yep, in the sumps of the dishwashers. Okay, now, so the first thing we need to do is this is a two-fold thing. It, this is a uh, cover that hides a lot of, there's some electronics and some hoses back behind this. This is also a interface piece that ties the upper washer and the lower washer together mechanically. Right, so we had the two screws in the back that we took out, the two big ones that looked like they were from the lid. This is what binds the two upper and lower half of the washer fixturally together on the front side. Um, so two screws here. Now one thing that I will tell you that throws people off is when putting this back on, they will put it on in the wrong place. Here's what I would suggest. Take your, take a Sharpie. When you take this cover off, so I'm gonna lift it up. Oh, missed one. When you take this cover off, what I would do is mark 
on here where the top hole is for your screws. There's little catches, little plastic catches here and here that go into the slots on this too to help you line everything up. One of the things I typically see happens is people try and put this on too low and then try and put it underneath here and figure out, can't figure out why is this not fitting? Why will it not go back? Because they see this hole in this one here and they're trying to line up the holes down low. It actually goes up much higher than that. So I do a little bit of Sharpie mark. Again, once we get this re thing reassembled, nobody will ever see the Sharpie except for you. You'll know it's there, but it helps you get everything aligned up right and make sure you're using the right set of holes when putting it back together. Again, if you're not sure, pictures are key. Take a picture of it the first time you're doing this to make sure you get everything lined up. Okay, now let's talk about my big rock with this, with this what we're seeing here. The number one thing when putting this back together that will bite you in the behind are two things. Number one, on the old washer, this line here breaks and it comes, in, it has a little plastic T that comes over to another uh, port on this other side over here. That little plastic T, it's a little white T and it is, uh, how did the French say, it's fragile. It is incredibly fragile, it's incredibly brittle. You have to make sure when you're taking the little, these little ties off, right, taking these off, that you really support that T well when you're trying to get the hoses off or you will snap it. I remember we, um, Jerry and I got to do a training out in Bellingham when they first released these washing machines many, many years ago and uh, we needed an opportunity to take one of these apart and um, every single one of us broke that stinking tee. Uh, every, every single one of us that touched that machine, we broke it. Me. Yep. <laughs> it was, it, we broke it every time because of the way it was designed. So. Fortunately, the newer washers, this one doesn't have that. They eliminated the T on there. It's only the one, one hose entry point. But this one, they introduced a new fun and interesting thing that will get in your way and make things difficult. It's this right here, this interface between these two pieces where it, the, you have the soap dispensers are in the upper washer, but all the ducting has to go down into the lower washer. So squeeze this clamp up. On this, take this off, there is an arrow built into the rubber. There's also an arrow, it might be hard to see, but there's actually an arrow molded into the plastic, into the rubber itself up here. There's also, on the plastic, there's an arrow-shaped little wedge. This arrow needs to line up into that arrow, and it needs to be absolutely flat down, completely 100% seated anything short of that and you're going to get an LC1 leak error which LC1 is the left hand side leak sensor because it's going to run down the hose and leak down there with this not being seen because all of the water that goes into this washing machine has to go through this hose because it all comes through the soap dispensers right that's why all the water valves are on the top because it made sense all of the plumbing for the water coming into the machine is all up at the top anyways if you don't get that seated and everything aligned properly on this, it will leak. I don't have to take this bottom one off because the brake, the physical brake is right here, right between the two machines. It's right at this point. It goes all the way across to this point. So th this is where the physical brake line is between the upper machine and the lower machine. So I don't have to take this part off. I just got to take the upper one off. All right, then we've got a couple other things to do. Here's our pressure switch for the lower washer. So we got to take apart this one and this one. It's nice, so we don't have to mess with the pressure switch lines. And what you'll find is all the plugs that they, Actually, I don't you have can't to take cross them up. They're all, they're all different. Yep. So um, don't be afraid of it. Actually, the only thing we need to remove, actually I put those plugs back together because I don't need to remove them. The only thing I need left to remove is this guy here because it goes all the way up through the upper washer. So that yep and there we go my 
little tube loosener. And then this one's fun because there's a zip tie, one of those pinned zip ties right in this front here. So if we turn it a little bit, we can squeeze the little prongs. And it's supposed to come out. It's supposed to. Okay. So that's free. That's free. Everything else is free. Now, what I can do is do a little test. Just push up on this. So that's loose. Make sure the back's loose. All right. All yep. Everything's free. So we'll go try. up, up, and away. There Let's it is. And right down. All right. So everything else on this machine now is going to be essentially just like any other front load washer, Samsung front load washers that you've worked on from this point down, right? You got your MEMS sensor, vibration sensor right in the top of the tub, which is an awful design, but they didn't ask us to design this um, because what happens is where the zip tie is, it ends up just sawing through the, through the wires over time with vibration. Um, so, and that comes up as an error that's well documented. So you just look up that error if you don't see it. it's one LC1 or, or the LC1 error. Those are all leak check. Um, but this is a well documented one. But this is how far you have to go to get to that sensor. Now, all of that being done, this is not, like I said, it's, it's essentially just any other Samsung front load. We can change the gasket out. Drain pumps in the front corner, just like any other Samsung front loader. Um, not a lot of craziness. I don't see a ton of issues with this part of this machine. I really don't. Where all of our problems come in is this guy, the upper washer. Um, now, this newer one, fortunately, I have not seen a ton of issues with yet. There hasn't been a ton of them in the wild um, as of yet. Not nearly at the, at least in my area, not nearly at the acceptance rate that was the original, uh, the original version of this washer. The big error we used to see a lot on this washing machine was one LC1. The leak check on this side of the lower washer. Well, when we look at the upper washing machine, right, what do we have that's on that side? Well, we have our fabric softener and our bleach dispensers on this side. We also have the fabric softener for the upper washer on this side. So what ends up happening here is that to get that error, is that the fabric softener dispenser is actually leaking. But it's leaking not from underneath. It's actually leaking by water coming up over the top and then running down the inside of the machine. As we know, fabric softener is very thick and pasty when it comes out of the bottle brand new from the grocery store. As it sits, it dehydrates even more and becomes even thicker and more paste-like as it continues to dehydrate in the water, what little water contents in there comes out. Well, as people use a lot of fabric softener in this in this upper washer, or what ends up happening is they're in the original ones, mind you, not this version, right? We're talking about the original version of this. There was a foam rubber disc that sat in here that acted as a check valve. As this machine filled up with water, that float would rise up and plug the hole that's down inside of here to keep the water from the washing machine going, coming back up out of the fabric softener. So it actually, as the water level would rise, it'd close the hole off. It was a very clever idea. The problem is, is that foam rubber that, um, that would stick, the fabric softener would stick to that. And eventually you get to the point where that seal would go up and it would stay stuck. So all of the water now, whenever the machine would call for the fabric softener flush into the machine, 
water that's coming in with the fabric softener here would never overcome that the adhesive that would stuck that foam float up underneath so the water instead and fabric softener instead of going down and siphoning through would actually come up over the top and you can test it very quickly just by starting the top washer do a, a rinse cycle and because it'll call for the fabric softener dispenser very quickly early on and you'll see it flow literally flow over the top of this and then you'll get the the one lc1 error to validate that there is a service bulletin that samsung has that says basically what we do is we change out that little foam rubber piece and it's about the size of a, a, a nickel. We change that foam rubber piece out to a plastic piece. The part cost is literally 50 cents. But it takes us an hour and a half of labor because we're not even done. We just got the upper washer off. Now we have to change that part out underneath and put it all back together for a part that was like 50 cents but it solves the problem. Um, Jerry's had some success with doing stuff that's not like this, that's not as quite as involved. If you wanna share that, if you've got clients that are kind of scoffing at the price and they wanna try something. Right, what I've used uh, is soap scum remover, bathroom soap scum remover. Letting it sit five or six minutes, okay? Trying to flush it again. That'll free that up with softening the fabric softener, softening the, the glue that's been, been created. I mean, it works. Um, I've even taken a little bit of uh, compressed air after, after the um, soap scum remover in, blowing it down, and um, it frees up. I haven't had a redo yet. And uh, the biggest thing is we need to get in the house, get out fast, make it reliable. It seems to be reliable. Um, not, it's not the bulletin, but if we're able to do this, it's a COD job, or we're able to save the customer, you know, 400 bucks, because we're gonna be charging them the service call plus major labor, um, we give it a try. Explain to them we're saving this if we can, and if not, we'll be back and put the, uh, the dispenser in. All right. So, like I said, your mileage may vary. It was something that I hadn't actually tried, so and Jerry has had some success with, so I figured we'd toss it out there to you all. And, and you know, again, it's something we're trying for our COD clients, and if they want to give it a whirl and see what happens in that way. If not, we, we do have the, uh, the known way to fix it. Um, all right. So now, how do we change out the little piece that's under the fabric softener dispenser? This is where this becomes very much uh, kind of physically painful. So we gotta roll this over. And spin it around. Spin it around. Walk this back here. Yep. So this rubber hose, let's see if we can tip this back a little bit. This rubber yeah. hose is the one that comes from the fabric softener dispenser. So you actually have to undo it from the dispenser side up here, right? and trying to get your fingers in on, again, these are squeezable clips. They're easy enough to squeeze if you can get your fingers in there. You squeeze that, we'll pull this off. Then you'll actually see the open underside of the fabric softener dispenser. Now there's, you'll see a, you'll see the, the, the piece that's in there. And then there's a little uh, cross hatched piece that's sitting in place that kind of holds that, that little puck in. You, that actually unthreads. So you just take like a pair of needle nose pliers on it, untwist it, take it off, dump the uh, little old puck out, put the new puck in, and then thread it all back together. The hardest piece you're gonna have to do of this whole thing is getting this hose back on. Back on. Because as you can see, they left us all kinds of room between the plastic chassis here, this ring, and this rubber Piece, which is why I'm not taking it apart because we would be here for the next 15 minutes trying to struggle trying to get this back on and this is the single hardest part of this entire repair is getting this hose back on because there's just not quite enough clearance between the hose the secure ring and the the plastic of the chassis of that upper washer to get everything to line up nice and neat and pretty and make it really easy to do you will fight with it. You will struggle with it. You will beat your head against the wall a couple of times. 
stick with it. It will get put, you'll be able to get it back together, but just understand that this is going to be your Achilles heel of this. This particular repair is going to be this. I can tell you under most cases, um, these machines are actually decently reliable. For, for a Samsung, I, I know, I'm speaking about Samsung and reliable, I'm sorry, yes, but they are. They're actually very good. Um, the biggest thing, like I said, the biggest continual issue that we've seen or with those that first generation of these washers having this particular issue. Um, everything else is just one offs. You know, of course, we get door gaskets because folks, they rip them, they tear them, or they get mold in them, things like that. Um, very few, if no issues ever with the top washer on these. Um, but uh, it, there's, like, they, they're actually built they're built decently well. Um, so fabric softener dispenser, this is our drain hose, if you couldn't see it very well that we, from the before, that we took off from the drain pump on the, for the upper washer. This has got its own little MEMS sensor. This is the vibration sensor for this upper washer. Um, and then our drain hose, uh, our water inlet hose for the lower machines. And then pressure line that goes up to the pressure sensor that's up here all with all the water valves and stuff for the upper washer. Um, it's, no. it's straightforward, whichever at this point, don't be afraid of it. Um, you know, it seems like a lot. The first time it's going to take an hour, hour and a half. Second time it's not. Yeah. It's just uh, being comfortable with it. Uh, we try to, you know, show people what we can do. We have our um, newest agents on the road with us. We take it apart. First time we do, the second time they do. Um, it's all a learning curve. Don't be afraid of it. Show your confidence to the client. You know, don't um, don't do any panic that you can do. Put on no, a really we good facade, really good. <laughs> you know. Um, oh sure, we'll take care of that for you. No problem. We uh, so just having hands on too. Um, we we did one of these. I know this was a concern for some some agents. Like, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, an agent brought this up to me. He's like, yeah, I've got one, a repair of one of these coming up in a couple of days, and I've never touched one. We were able in Brockton to have them tear one apart, and we didn't even go quite as far as what we did here. And he came back, told me you know, a couple of days later, he's like, no, that went fantastically, just getting to see how the thing comes apart, where the screws are, what all I have to worry about. It went very, very well. So hopefully this is helpful getting to see how all this comes apart, um, that was one of the big things, feedback again. Based off of your direct feedback, this is what this is for. You asked us like, hey, the last couple of times when we've, we've taken things apart, we kind of stage it ahead of time. You wanted to actually see us take it apart. So hopefully this is kind of what you had in mind, um, how it, the whole thing comes apart and what are the common issues, what's going to get in my way, what things should I look out for. Um, so what questions do you all have about the Samsung Flex washer or just in general? So that's a great, great call out. No, thank you for that. So actually on these latch assemblies, um, and a lot of manufacturers do this, they're all a little bit different. So if you've got clothes in this washer and it's completely dead, right? And you have no power whatsoever. And like the first, our first concern is let's get the clothes out of a washing machine. There is actually an override on the latch assembly that allows you to physically un lock it. Um, now everyone's a little bit different so you have to kind of learn the the peculiarities of that particular machine. Um, this one's going to be would be kind of a bit of a bear to get up through. You, I don't know whether I'd come up through the bottom or down through the top but there is this little mechanism right here on the side right here. This is the physical latch release. All you have to do is get something hooked around this and pull it down. 
while you open the door. And that will actually release the lock mechanism inside. It'll, you'll hear it pop. And then you can open, unlatch the door to get the door open and get the client's clothes out, even under a no power situation. Um, LGs, it's a little bit more substantial. It sticks down and it looks like, you know, those old school flat round lollipops. It looks like one of those just upside down, like it's hanging from the stick. And it has a hole in, in the lollipop so you can get like a, I'll show you what I use on this. Like a, a C-shaped, a C-shaped pick tool to get a hold of the lollipop from underneath and pull it down. And usually I can reach in from those machines, I'll reach in from above and kind of re put my hand down along, push the tub to the side and reach down underneath and kind of grab it and pull it down and you'll hear the pop and then you can open the door. I've also used my little grabbing tool, the little three thing, the flexible one that we use. Bring it up, clamp it on just like with the candy machine that grabs the candy. Grab onto it, pull it down. Um, works it's amazingly well, especially in a tight, tight spot. Um, all we need to do is grab that, pull it down. The client will be so happy that their clothes have been there for three weeks or out. Then they can take the clothes out, then we can drain it. Um, but I'm not touching the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't want to get it on you. Yeah. Oof. Um, but no, thank you for that call out. That's a great, great, great one. Because um, it is, a lot of the manufacturers have that kind of, for their front load machines have an override that allows us to get in the machine even when it's locked, the doors are latched and under a no power state. So no, that is that is a fantastic call out, thank you. What other questions, what other stuff we got? So, need a little bit more info from you, Corinne, on that one. So, is it like the whole machine's dead, kind of the same state, or it just physically the door won't? You tried to latch, and it you hear it clunk, clunk, latch, but it won't let go of the door. That's from underneath. Yeah, you'd have to either go from again. It's hollow underneath, and that's what I was talking about before. Is where with this particular one, I'm not. I think. Because of the way this one's built, I would probably try and access it by tipping the machine back and getting access to this latch. System. Because it's going to be sitting right about here from underneath through the access hole underneath and go up and underneath the pulley. That way, I don't want to have to undo all of this just to get the to this, until right? Because we'd have to go, I'm not even sure, no, we wouldn't be able to take the face off because... No. The doors, it, we right. need the door off. So, no, you'd have to come from underneath on this one machine. You'd have no choice but to come under from underneath to, to get to that little latch piece to get the door to unlatch. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a case where the door latch is broken and you have power and you hear it go clunk, clunk, and it's still, or it's still stuck, I've run across that once before in seven years, and let me say it's... Um, Violence is uh, assured. <laughs> Violence is assured. There is going to be collateral damage. Um, you're going to end up breaking the whole lock assembly. You'll end up breaking the, uh, the catch on the door, possibly. Try and limit the collateral damage. Again, that front steel of the machine is fairly flexible. It's going to bend out in a way as well when you try to do that. But there are some instances where you just have to pop, physically break the door latch to get it open. It is exceptionally rare. Usually the overrides, even with the clunk clunk and it didn't open, I would still try the manual override first. That way we just limit any of the extra collateral damage that way we would be causing um, and putting their machine out of commission for even longer. Now, so. Whirlpool, 
um, has, had an issue, has had an issue, but if the drain pump doesn't turn, it won't release the latch. Um, again, I siphon the water out, and next thing you know, it releases because the pressure switch is activated. It will not allow the door to open when there's water in it. And um, GE has a goofy part in their cycling that if the door isn't, the drain pump actually won't spin up until it detects the door latch. So if you, but you can get it into, trick the machine into a flood mode, flood protect mode, if it won't unlatch or you're having issues with the door latch on a GE machine, if you start to siphon the water out, do this knowing what's gonna happen though. That's why I'm gonna mention it now. As you start to suck the water out of the machine, once you get to about 60% of the machine's volume left, the machine will go into flood protect mode and it will kick the drain pump on. If you still have your vacuum attached to it, when it does that, it will gag your vacuum. It will come out at a velocity your vacuum cannot handle and you're gonna wear wash water. Make sure you're near the drain standpipe. So as soon as you hear that drain pump kick on, move it over to the drain standpipe and stick it in there and let it drain out the rest of the way. And once it drains, then the latches will usually open up because their GE's, their sequencing of events is different slightly different than everybody else so you have they do it in a weird order and it's one thing i found that to kind of trick the ge machines into opening up is to trick them into flood protect mode and by siphon the siphon the water off it'll do that but just know that it's gonna it will do and kick the drain on and start going but and ask me how i know so scott <laughs> you just led into our newest product newest uh, product out is the ge all-in-one washer and dryer. Hopefully with our next session will be um, a little bit of information on it. Uh, GE's information is extremely limited at this point. Um, I know right now we have three of them in the Brockton outlet. Um, so that's one of our projects to get, uh, get familiar with that. It looks like it's going to be an extremely popular unit. We have no idea what the history has been so far with GE, um, but that's going to be one of our areas of uh, concern and training. So those of you that haven't seen it, go into the store, look for this thing. It looks like a front load washer with a big head, a big top portion of it. So it's a washer dryer all com combined, full size. They advertise that it can do a whole load of laundry, wash and dry in two hours, but it's a ductless dryer. Um, what it does is it uses a heat pump system on top. So this is a washer and a dryer with a refrigeration unit on the top of it. It has a sealed system. So all of your sealed system knowledge now has to come to bear on a washing machine. Suddenly, the world's upside down and cats and dogs are living together. You know, what's going on here? But this, supposed, this is supposed to be a really popular machine. I know Jerry's reached out to a couple of, of folks that he knows even with GE. GE's own technicians haven't really even been trained on this unit yet either. So the information is very limited, and I've been chomping at the bit myself when I get into Brockton to actually hopefully have one down there. And Jerry was just telling me this morning they've got three, so we can actually skin one down a little bit and just see how bad is bad and, and what, what the limitations are with this thing. How are we going to get inside of it and try and figure that out for you? So hopefully that's one of those things coming soon, maybe next month or so. Um, once we get a little bit more comfortable with it, we can actually walk you folks through that, but it is coming. We are starting to sell them because obviously for Brockton to get them, there has to be some open box ones that have bounced around. So one of uh, our asks would be when you see one, not if you see one, is when you see one, put it out on the chat to everyone with what you found or what your failure is on it. Um, we have been, uh, information gathering mode right now. Um, we have to look good in the client's home. So if you have something new, a new product that you've grown the first time and you found this great fix for it, put it on the chat. That's what we're here for. Um, if you put it out, all 60 agents are gonna know about it, um, especially that new GE. Um, because right now the jury's out on it. We don't know what we're gonna run into. And as I say, it looks like it's gonna be an extremely popular piece. Uh, we're coming to the holidays. We don't need to get held up in a client's home. Um, unnecessary time when someone else already had the answer. So. Yes, so. Aaron. Yeah, we have a couple questions. I think the first one I can definitely field, which is Jeff, which is, uh, he poses 
child has exactly what it says to be assigned. And I think that's just going to depend on what it is you just want to do. If you've got to go this far, yes. <laughs> so this far it would be a yes. If it's, it's just a, a I'm doing a, a, you know, a minor adjustment, then no. It's really just going to depend on what you're doing. The And if that's not clear enough, don't always type our, our follow-up question. Uh, and then the second one is from Mustafa. He said, error for the invertebrate. Can that cause the lower washer not to spin? Yes. yes. <laughs> if that's not a definitive just, enough answer for you. <laughs> yes. And, and it may not throw an error code. Yeah, correct. Uh, you can get everything up until, with that inverter board failing, everything up including the, the whole control panel not responding to anything you're doing. Or it'll respond to the buttons and not the dial. Or respond to the dial and not the buttons. Okay. The main controls, the user interface board that we took down, hooks to the inverter bird board, bleh, bird, bleh, inverter board first. So when you start seeing goofy behavior on your control panel, that's not necessarily a control panel issue. The inverter board, they, they're tied directly together. I found recently an uh, inverter board has been causing trouble. Um, my, my only test that I have at this point since, you know, we have the MOTA, the rotor and stator, um, pull off that back plate, okay? Try to put it in a four spin mode. What you see is if that, um, the motor just does a little tiny jog, doesn't turn at all, okay, we're going to go after the inverter. Yeah, if it's if doing it, just like that's it. that kind of jerk. That's all. If it does a full rotation, okay, we're going to go after the hall sensor in the state unit, okay? Um, because at this point, it's given voltage to the, uh, to the motor, okay? The hall sensor senses rotation, the magnets, Okay, and if it doesn't sense it, it's going to shut it down. That should throw an error. It hasn't been. Um, if you only get a little jog, look at drive, which is your inverter. So you might have a, a three-minute diag. Okay, if you really wanted to get technical, you can go right down to the connector to the motor. Okay, check your voltage. Okay, but um, as I say, just a little jog, a little tiny bit, very little motion. Go after the inverter first. Okay, don't uh, you know if you want to order the. Um, the hall sensor that's on the motor and have it as a backup, that's fine. But I'm going to say 90% of the time it will be the inverter. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yep. And we can always send back what we don't use. Yeah, and it's not a bad idea, especially when you get, uh, you know, escalated client situations like that. Um, overshoot. You know, order more than what you think. Anything you think you might need that might be causing the problem, and that way we can limit, you know, having to go back out that third time or, you know, constantly tell the client, no, this one's damaged, no, this one's damaged. They don't want to hear that. Eventually their patients will wear out. So let's make sure that we've, you know, you did absolutely the right thing. Absolutely. Right. It's also good to put in a POTS escalation. If we're getting damaged POTS, it has to go back to national POTS. Um, oftentimes, it's a vendor issue. We may be ordering from a, um, a not-so-well-known vendor. Um, and they make note that we're getting these um, aftermarket whirlpool ice makers that are not compatible with certain uh, replacement numbers on whirlpool. So again, notifying national POTS is always a good thing. And also partner up with one of the, the veteran technicians. You know, we're all here. You know, a five-minute conversation during the day isn't going to kill us. Um, you know, it's any of the guys you know, talk it up. Put it on teams. Um, someone will answer you. Um, we're all in the same boat. We're in the same, the same situations every single day. Let's make it easy on each other.
Yep. Yeah. No. If if it's one of those things. If you know, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, there's not, there's not a ton of serviceable, if it's actually into the tub issues in this, this does not come apart. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, it's, when you go and look at the exploded view for this, there is, the parts assembly is gigantic um, because there's, the way this is, it's built from the factory, not from service perspective. So there's a whole lot of it that's really not serviceable in the field. Yep. And again, when, sorry, go ahead. Yep. No, it's great. The big thing, too, is make sure when you're looking at Samsung Exploded Views, right, there's a column on the parts listings. So the way Samsung's Exploded Views work, right, is that it has all the, the Exploded View of the parts, and then underneath that particular section, it lists all the parts out with the key numbers on the far left column. On the far right column, there's a key that says S-A or S-N-A. SNA, if any parts listed and you go all the way over to that far right hand column, it says SNA, that's service not available, which means you can order that part, yeah. it will not show up, it will not come in, it'll be canceled by Samsung because it's not a s field part that they have set up to be serviceable in the field. Right, we want so, it to say SA S -S -S as many times as possible. I don't want to see SNA because I don't want to have to replace every little screw in here. Right. You know, but we have to use a judgment call. We gotta, we gotta do what's right for the company as well as right for the client. We have to do it efficiently and effectively. And like and Mustafa said, be smart. Right. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. So I know Jeff asked if, and I know we're winding up shortly, so get your questions in there, guys, because we're gonna move on to the next piece. But I know Jeff asked if there's a bad part on the top unit other than the dispenser. Um, you know, and like the other. Well, it yeah, it depends upon the failure. Right, it, that's a good question, but a difficult one to answer. Again, most of my experience with this, with the upper washer, has just been the leaking from the fabric softener dispenser, or you know maybe the water valve assembly that you know we've got one of the water valves that doesn't open up properly for the lower washer or something like that. But that's not really in the upper washer; it just happens to be where it is. Uh, but I haven't run across, that's why I said that this is actually yeah, pretty well yeah, built. Yeah. I haven't seen, with the number of these I have installed, I know in the map area that I cover, I really haven't seen a lot of repeat issues outside of that fabric softener dispenser issue. Sending all the hearts. What do we, Kelly? You cannot come in this chat and say I love fabric softener. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, she can say that if she sends Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I know I'm echoing because we have a lot of the, the different mics going. Um, I am wrapping up now, though. Uh, so send the love. Send.
and anything that you guys want us to break down. And um, we are going to give you like two minutes while we kind of switch over to the next thing we're kind of doing here. Um, but again, thank you, heart, love, and what are we doing next? Thank <laughs> you. 